She's on every week and we love her. It's just always great to have her. But you like to do your special intro. Off you go. I will. Uh, she's oh, she's she's really chatty. If the law's crappy, no, hold on a minute. Uh, this uh, is terrible. This is terrible. No, I'm sorry. You you've, you've thrown me on the spot. She's why, chatty. Why have I thrown you on the spot? This is what she's you chatty. do every week. She's you sassy. do it so well. She makes the law classy. There we go. There we go. There we go. She's Ladies once met Shirley Bassey. <laughs> Hell, I don't know. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our legal eagle. And she's great, Hattie Savari. Yay! Hello, Hattie. How are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you both? We're terrific. Well, all right. There we go. Good, 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 good. We you know, I was okay. just listening to your last topic, and somebody wise once told me that with lots of things comes great responsibility. Did he shoot webs out of his wrists? He did. Oh, well, there we go. It was Neil. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> there you go. But it's very true. And, and you know, um, with responsibility sometimes comes the stresses of life. I. So you, you I can work hard, two... get lots of things, have lots mm. of things. Yeah. Be happy that you've got lots of things, but then managing those things can become stressful. Yes, there's there's a lovely little phrase for for that, and I'll put it on the screen. Tenants, what are your rights? Was that the phrase, Neil? Um, <laughs> that was it. No, that's that's what we're talking <laughs> about. No, that's, right? that's me yeah. gently moving things along. In there you go. That, that, that's move. what you're talking about. New level, new, new devil. devil. Oh what the hell god! Is that? <laughs> I get that. I, don't I get, get that. that. At all. No, I don't get it. I don't explain. I really don't get it. I get it. For, for every well, higher it to me, Hattie Suvari. Go to, no, I want Hattie Suvari to explain it. It's okay. a concomitant set of problems. Neil's you, you want loads of money, you haven't got loads of money. So you have loads of money, and then the, the, the new level, new devil, you then got to, like Hattie says, manage that money sensibly. Manage your responsibilities. And new level me, resonates with me because I've got a 16 year old, and I got him a big card that said, You've now reached level 16. Ooh, and and it's it. got a gaming kind of photograph yeah. on it. Yeah. And at 16, where you think you know everything um, <laughs> and you're going to conquer the world yeah. and you've got your GCSEs to do and you want to save up for a car and then your mum your mum and dad asks you how you're going to pay for your car insurance, your new devil comes along called responsibility. My, cousin, my cousin's uh, son, uh, Sammy, who's adorable, I wanted to change his car <laughs> the other week. We met up for a family tea. Get a load of this. And he wanted to change his... Guess what the quote was? Quote for his car, he's 20... Early 20... 25,000 pounds a year. You mentioned that in our last show. I did. I've never, I can't get did. over it. Yeah, well, that's it. That's it. And we said it's probably because of the damage that can be caused elsewhere, which means mm. his insurance will have to pay for that, as well as mm. potentially replace his car. And the law goes on and on. So, tenants, mm. what are your rights? I realise that this is show 14, and today's the 14th of June. And I really like that. Okay. I have oh, a mental age of 14, so it really works out well. <laughs> well, there we have it. So, 4.6 million people renting in the UK. I wanted to do this show to discuss my top tips and what you need to know if you're a tenant or indeed a landlord. Okay, so I'm not excluding landlords. I've been a tenant and I am a landlord. So I kind of live both sides of the coin. Have you guys been tenants or are tenants yep. or landlords? Yep. Never been a landlord, certainly been a tenant. No. Neil, you're nodding, neither. No, I used to drink tenants when I was in the low point in my life. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh I could I could I could feel Russ. Sorry. The pain, the pain. Um, no, we get one of the, the country's on. top legal experts on. Yeah. Oh, come on. You're, you're All right. Well, she, too much she was in the area and she's not expensive. Okay. Well, there you, you go. Happy now? You happy now? Happy, happy, no, happy, happy no, I, I prefer to top legal up. experts, so the right. forum is yours. Yes, right. Right. Okay. Okay. Tenants, up, what are your rights? Headlines, headlines. Your landlord cannot raise your tent. Your, your tent? I've got tent and tenant on my brain. Your, your rent. Your landlord cannot raise your rent whenever they like. Um, especially if you're in a fixed term tenancy contract, they will need your approval during the term or they'll have to wait to the end of the contract. Um, so let me just delve into that 
You've got a contract. Well, we're not going to get rent. past the first bullet point today. No, 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 no. It's important. But let's it's do important it. important because I think, well, if yes. I understand it, then hopefully you know, everyone will. So you, you, you've signed the contract. It's 500. Yeah, Short it's 1,000 pound a month. Let's say it's 1,000 pound a month. Yeah. The landlord cannot say, I tell you what, Neil, um, I, I need a new car. So I'm putting it up to 1,100 pounds a month. They can't do that until the Not end of the term. Not during the term. Until the end of the term, unless they agree something with you. And I don't really see many tenants saying, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I'm up for a rise, put my rent yeah. up. If you yeah. don't have a tenancy contract, because there are tens of thousands of people with no tenancy contract and you're on a rolling week by week or month by month. Really? Contract. Yeah, yeah. There, there is. Then your rent stays the same unless your landlord gives you legal uh, notice in the form of a section 13 to increase your rent because obviously you know you don't have that 12 month contract in place so at what point can your landlord come and say to you i'm putting up the rent but they can only do that once in 52 weeks so once a year so even right. if you don't have a contract they can't turn up and say i'm just going to put up the rent because you're renting month by month so month four is going to start costing you 20 percent more right okay deposits it's one of the biggest disputed Jeez. areas between landlords and tenants i've had i've been a tenant disputing a deposit and i've been a landlord disputing a deposit so i've, I've just lived... come out of a very bad situation hattie oh very listen bad. i yeah. get it i get it and i tell really you nowadays bad. the deposits a one month deposit doesn't really cover some serious damage that can be done um but a tenant is entitled to the deposit back as long as they leave it as they found it in as terms they of found it. There is no uh, damage to the property. And damage doesn't include wear and tear. And, yes, we could all argue wear and tear to some degree. So, Hattie, here's a key point. What yes. is reasonable wear and tear? Well, that is a massive question, Russ, because what I might think is a reasonable wear and tear, for example, a sofa losing its colour a bit and losing its elasticity a bit because we've been sitting on it for three years. Yeah. And what you may say is wear and tear and wear and tear should never include furniture, really, um, I, I think, because that's where you just lost for example, the carpet. Let's talk about the carpet that was laid. It's worn out a bit. It doesn't have holes in it. Holes, to me, unless it had holes in it when the tenant took the property, means that it's, you know, damage. But wear and tear is if it discolours a bit. But the key to try and avoid all of this dispute, both mm. for the landlord and the tenant, is as a landlord and a tenant, take photos of everything. The day you hand over the keys, the day you receive the keys. Mm everything every corner every room take videos take photos and just stick it somewhere that put it somewhere safe because when a dispute arises whether it's after 12 months or three years or five years mm. you can all go back to what was the original condition because if you yep. do end up in court that is what's going to matter what was it like who can show me what this was like and what it is like now if there's a dispute over the condition. I do say tenants, it is wise when you move out, clean the property, either go yourself and give it a once over or hire somebody to do it for you because landlords are entitled to say the property has been left in a tip with their, with rubbish and unwanted belongings everywhere and I'm going to go and get a cleaner for, a, and it depends how big the property is. I mean, it could cost you a hundred pounds to have a two bedroom flat cleaned these days thoroughly easily easily but yeah exactly and if you're in a house a three bed four bed house that you're renting you're talking two three four hundred pounds for your landlord to hire somebody to get it cleaned that's without any um making good of areas that have been you know been damaged so it is worthwhile if you want to save your deposit all of it handing back the property in good condition and handing the property as a landlord to a tenant in good condition so this is actually quite a crucial point on, on deposits that not many people know about, okay? So if your landlord doesn't give you something called a tenancy deposit certificate, which means they've protected your deposit, mm. which they can do very, very quickly once your deposit has been taken, either by them or their managing agent, you can make a claim on your landlord for three times the value of your deposit to be given to you. In real yes. money from your landlord. Yes. So right? in other in other words, and this is incredibly important. Fred Smith, your landlord. Fred Smith, 
cannot keep the money. That no. money, he can't do that. That is not the law. That deposit money has to be held in, in a trust, tenancy deposit like. scheme to say yes. that it is protected and it doesn't cost landlords much to do that at all. So you don't actually hand over the money to the tenancy deposit scheme, but because you've protected it and you've got a certificate, you are legally liable to give that money back to the tenant once it's agreed that the money should go back. So bear that in mind. It's very easy. If you Google, I don't have a tenancy to deposit scheme, uh, a tenancy deposit certificate, you find lots of advice and help there where you, which, you know, if you're, if your landlord's saying, I'm not giving you a certificate, I, I've protected it. I have protected it, but I'm not giving you the certificate. Lots of places and lots of things you can do to say, right, I'm going to take action against you now. What do you do? Uh, so uh, there's a, the questions are coming in, which, which I, would be great if you could answer. Isn't the maximum deposit now five weeks rent? Is that true? Not to my knowledge, not to my knowledge. It's one month. I mean, people take up to one month's deposit, one month's rent in advance, sometimes three months deposit if the rent's yeah. really high or if it's a very, if there's, it's a, if it's a expensive property mm. with, you know, expensive to repair and refurbish. Um, but yes, I mean, deposits are, are, are highly contentious areas of tenancies, well, especially I'm, when people want their I'm, money back. I'm burning up about it at the moment. Anyway, uh, from Scotty in Wolverhampton. Hattie, if you have a contract that should short hold tenancy agreement and you need non willful damage repairs completing and yes. the landlord doesn't or drags their feet, can you with? Oh, great question. I was going to ask right. you the yeah. same thing. Okay. Can you One of the things rent? I will say to any tenant is never withhold rent. Okay. What you're contractually bound to pay that rent pay the rent if you feel that your rent should be reduced for any reason and i like the screen by the way then you can make a claim you should have that have that issue separately to your rent with your landlord so for example if there is a cooker that's not working or mm. something whatever it may be something's not working you think well oh hold on the white goods and me having use of that is part of this agreement you can say to your landlord right here's the rent of whatever it is a thousand pounds a month i've had to go out and buy takeaway food or buy a a, a little get me a you know get by the cooker thing that you plug in that's cost me a hundred pounds i would like 100 pounds refund please next month keep the transactions completely separate because people have this idea that if the landlord, if something's not working in the property, then they're going to stop paying a portion of their rent. Mm. Or sometimes they think I'm not going to pay my rent. I've had a leak or I've, had, I've got something going on in this property that isn't being fixed. I'm not going to pay the rent. Always pay your rent. Make a separate claim. Have separate conversations with your landlord to compensate you for any losses you've had for anything that's not working or any use of the property that you've not been able and to how make. do you and hattie how do you he said with anger in his voice ensure <laughs> that when the landlord has promised that there was a leak in the ceiling not repaired kitchen was damaged not repaired uh bathroom shower not working correctly not repaired how do you how do you uh, you know I, yeah i'm gonna fix it i'm gonna fix it never did right okay never did and you know who you are Okay, okay. Well, put it this way. First thing to do, keep a record. Keep a record of everything that's gone wrong. Keep yeah. a record of your communication. Always. Keep a record of if you financially had to lose out because you had to go and do, you know, get something in the place of it or use, and then you make your claim. You warn, you, you try to resolve it. And I'm at the end of this, I'm going to come up with my top tips for resolving issues Great. because that's that's the first thing that happens when things go wrong. There's an issue somewhere. And, you know, whether it's a badly behaved tenant or a badly behaved landlord and or miscommunication, it happens. But keep a record of everything you have. Pay your rent in full, then make your claim for your damages. And then you can prove that these damages were not being taken care of because you've got record of your communication, even if there was no response from the landlord. And you're saying, I need this kitchen, this area of the kitchen yeah. fixed. I'm not able to use it because X, Y and Z. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the time I've had to take off of work to deal with this. This is my loss of earnings as a result. Tot it all up. 
Um, that's what the online money claims is for. When you can say, I want to make a money claim because I have lost out yep. on this basis. Here's my evidence. Here are my photographs. Here's the uh, correspondence and take it from there. Rights and responsibilities. OK, because tenants have responsibilities and obviously rights as well. But they have a right to live in the property that's safe and good state of repair. Uh, challenge excessively high charges, whatever the charges may be that you've agreed with your landlord. If you think, well, that's actually really excessive. Should I be paying that? You have the right to challenge that. You have a right to know who your landlord is. I had a case like this many years ago, which was very bizarre. If you do not know who your landlord is, you can write to the person or company that you pay your rent to. And your landlord can be fined if they do not give you this information within 21 days of your request. Sometimes you might feel the need to write directly to your landlord if you're the managing agent is not doing what they should be doing. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Get that. So that's where that would come useful. Useful. Live in the property undisturbed and undisturbed by your landlord, somebody he's instructed who are the agent, a neighbour, noisy neighbours, disruptive neighbours. That's what that comes under. Uh, see an energy performance certificate for the property. If they say, no, 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 we don't need to carry that out, you have a right to say, I'd like to see that, please, because I think my gas or electricity or something's going wrong. Um, have a written agreement if you have a fixed-term tenancy of more than three years. So if you've been in the property for more than three years, you have the right to say, right, I want an assured shorthold agreement now that covers me for 12 months oh, with a six-month break. So some people, some landlords don't want to issue those um, shorthold tenancy agreements, God knows why. I think it's good for the tenant and I think it's good for the landlord. But for some reason, some landlords don't want to do that. And the tenancy agreement, it can't be what the landlord wants it to be. It has to comply with the law and it has to be fair. So if there's something in that tenancy agreement, and please take the time to read it. I know there can be 20 pages, 30 pages long. Yeah. Bedtime reading or cup of coffee or tea, whatever your poison is. Read it because there'll be something, it could be something in there where you think, I don't quite understand that or I don't like that. That doesn't feel right. You have the right to ask questions for it to be clarified. Really important because it's when things go wrong that you'll have to pick it up. And if you're in court, you have to go through it line by line. Oh. And it is, it's like pulling out teeth. This is so important because there's been a tectonic shift in owning your home in the united kingdom massively and it, it's in everyone used to you know have a job for life and you have your own home and it was all marvelous that's gone out the window and so many people will never own their own home they will be renting forever okay i mean in america that it's very normal most people rent new york everybody and in rents. turkey turkey's yeah, the everybody same rents. everybody rents and germany isn't it Oh, is it like that in Germany as well? Apparently a lot of Germans rent as well, apparently. Okay. But it, but it wasn't the case here. No, but it wasn't. it is the case now. So it's no good living on the old model. It's it's how life is. So why I was so pleased that you wanted this as, as your topic for this week, because it affects millions and millions of people. It does. Let's dash to Wolverhampton. I think you've covered it, but I just want to double check. How do you claim against your landlord if they don't honour repair? Oh, Yeah. Yes, I'm going if to come you, to where you can you can't get free afford a solicitor advice. Or Absolutely, I am going to come. Uh, I am going to come onto free advice and help in a, in a minute. After I just go over a couple okay. of more really quick yes, easy no, points. Please do. Please Responsibilities, please do. right? It yeah. is your responsible as a tenant to take good care of the property, um, including turning the water mains off if you go away in winter. If okay. there's a pipe burst and everything goes absolutely ballistic in there, because you ne if you neglect the property, your landlord has a potential claim against you. So bear that in mind. Uh, pay the agreed rent. And this is what we were talking about earlier. Even if repairs are needed or in your, you're in dispute, that is a separate matter. Treat it separately. It doesn't mean you, you can't offset one off the other. It just doesn't work like that. Pay other charges as agreed. For example, council tax, utility bills. There's been lots of issues where, council, where tenants have said, I didn't know. I, saw, I, I should have paid the council tax. I thought the bills were included. Clarify this all before you say how much, when, what does it cover? Um, repair or pay any damage caused by you, your family or your friends. 
leave the property as you found it. And if you're in, and, and as I say, it's very wise before you move all your furniture in, before you move in, or if you've moved in and you're thinking, God, I didn't do this, take photos of everything because then you can prove what it was like. You can prove how you're, when you leave it, that you're leaving it very similar or exactly the same as, as you found it. And you're not allowed to have your mate renting out the room next door without your landlord's consent. That is called subletting. Your landlord has to agree and approve for any friend, family or relative to stay more than two weeks. Two weeks. So you might have a friend that says, I'm coming along for three months. You've got to say to your landlord, I've got someone that's coming to live, uh, stay with me for a longer period than even, I. Even if they're yeah. not planning to be there. Even if they're not planning to be there. Even Absolutely. if they're not so planning. Absolutely. It Excuse does. Me. Sorry. Yes, even because, if they're not paying. Well, because, for example, when you're going to rent a property, you write the names of the tenants and the occupants, yep. right? Yep. Most yep. contracts only write the name of the tenant, but a landlord will be aware who's going to live there. They have the right to say who's going to live there, how many of you. Are there pets? Are there not uh, pets? Absolutely. A very dear friend of mine uh, was renting out a property. They clearly subletted it to the, to the second or third bedroom, whatever it was. The damage was terrible, and they it was a nightmare. You're absolutely right. It's such a good point. It is, Such it is important. A tenancy agreement can be written or oral, but I would recommend everything in writing, Write even if it's down. an email. Write it down, keep a record. The laws, there's lots of laws that cover um, tenants and, and landlords, namely the Landlord and Tenant Act 1987 and the Housing Act uh, that govern and assist both tenants and landlords. Um, I'm going to go on to where you can get help because I think we're right. going to run out of time. I was going to talk mm. about an assured tenancy mm. and illegal evictions, what they cover. Yeah. An illegal eviction is when a landlord tries to get you out without going through the proper channels that they have to to serve you notice. Um, they can only serve you something called a Section 21 if you've got the assured short hold tenancy agreement. Um, if you don't, then they have to go through other steps. They can't force you out. They can't come and change the locks. They have to go through certain steps. Okay. Uh, top tips. Okay. If you're having a problem and you've got issues. Do try to resolve these directly with your landlord to begin with, okay? And and I know, it, you know, you might say, well, I've tried that. Try amicably as best as you can. Keep a record. Do everything by email or text or WhatsApp, whatever, because then you've got a record of it. Mm. Um, make a formal complaint in writing to your landlord, even if it's someone that you haven't really had that kind of relationship with where you would make a formal complaint. Do it because that is what you're expected to do before you turn up to any other place to try and get help. If that doesn't work, um, and also set out what you're complaining about, put as much evidence as possible, photographic, video evidence, whatever you can, and keep a copy of everything you do with your landlord in terms of correspondence. If that doesn't work, your local council will be very interested about any landlord that does not carry out repairs that has a risk to your health and safety, or if you're being threatened with illegal eviction. The councils are very hot on these sorts of topics, and it might take a few phone calls, but report it, report your landlord to your council if your landlord is not actually going through the right channels to sort this out, okay? And show them a record of what you've tried to do with your landlord to try and resolve these issues, to try and get your landlord to behave in the way that the landlord should with taking care of issues. Failing that, or as well as that, you could go, and I'm going to say it, to your local MP or councillor yeah. and make a complaint about your landlord to them as well. Again, providing your evidence of your correspondence, your photographic evidence of what your complaints are about and why you're making the complaint and what the remedy is that you're seeking. It's uh, you, without goodwill on both sides, it's a minefield. It really, really is. What do you do? Quick, where, um, where I wanted to ask the, the uh, when the gas fire thing. That was a good question. Even uh, where are where we go? Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Where is the gas fire thing? Here we are, Hattie. Uh, if a gas fire is condemned by the gas board because it's dangerous beyond repair, how soon must landlord repair replace? Can you make any immediate claim against a consequential loss? 
what would be a consequence or loss if your gas fire is not working unless i su- assume you up. don't have any other loss you don't have any other heating well unless it could the, be cold you know, I yeah, you don't have any could other be very cold, could get ill. Uh, my understanding is that anything dangerous, the landlord has 24 hours to deal with it. Anything dangerous or to your health and safety, it's 24 hours to deal with it, i.e. if it's deemed unsafe and there's a leak or something like that mm. and the gas board have come and tapped it off and said, listen, this needs to be removed. I would say a reasonable time, 24, 48 hours, maybe even three, you know, three days if nothing's leaking and causing you mm. any damage, but 24 hours for anything dangerous. And, and if they don't turn up, they just oh, aren't busy. They're negligent. It's a criminal offence to be negligent with health and safety to a tenant. Full stop. Interest, interesting. So it's a very serious thing. Health and safety... Breaching health and safety rules and regulations, in, in, in my opinion, the council will come down on you on the landlord with a ton of bricks. I've got a case now, Good. which Good. is an extraordinary case because it's all actually the tenant doing the damage that's causing them the health and safety issues. But anyway. Well, that's an interesting twist if they're doing it to themselves. Yeah, they are. Um, they're doing it to themselves and they're reporting the landlord. Oh, well, what he meant by either. consequential losses, uh, Scotty was saying, buying temporary heating, etc., paying for additional... Absolutely. Absolutely. This is what I was talking about earlier, Scotty. You if you've had to go and buy a heater because your heating's not working, the cost of your heater, you can go to your landlord and say, can you please uh, compensate me? Here's the receipt. Here's why I had to buy it. Absolutely. Right. Before, before we finish today, um, I really wanted to ask this before we finish, but it's, it's, it's not on topic, but it's quite interesting so okay. we've got 30 seconds left hattie yes if you see a dog in a hot car and clearly it's in trouble oh god is it legal to break into the car to free the dog i don't know the direct answer to that but what i would say one, my man. view would be 100 percent go for it because yeah. You're saving, it has to be legal, Is it, logically. I'm talking logically now. I haven't seen the law on that. But funny you say that because I've actually done a couple of videos on, on pets in cars. It's illegal to let your pet hang out the window when you're driving and things like that. But um, I would say it has to be legal because it's no different to seeing a house on fire and you kick down the door to save somebody in the house. You're trying to yeah, save absolutely. an animal absolutely. from from, from or, or any living species being from being harmed so i can't see how it would be illegal we well, wouldn't be better off calling the police or someone like that yeah. well you can but say if it yeah. takes too long and that poor animal's suffering i mean in america it's a third story i read last week about a young child who um was yeah, left in the car the and died yeah, that, in well, the car yeah. while oh, she no. went shopping oh, yeah, yeah yeah absolutely and they go shopping in the supermarket very quickly you've got to wind up one thing I would do, if you're going to leave a dog or a child, please don't do it, but especially in the very, very hot weather, leave a note saying, yes, I know my child's in the car, or I know, put it on your dashboard, I will be back in three minutes or five don't minutes. Don't leave your child or dog well, no, in the car. Want... Just don't do it. That's got to be the most absurd thing ever in the heat or in any weather. You heard it first here. I'm passionate about on the that. the Daily Show. You won't, so am I, especially dogs enough kids but dogs hmm. we'll be back on friday at 12 o'clock hattie suvari you are a freaking legend thank you that's hattie suvari. You, are you are awesome oh, thank you awesome. guys thank you bye have bye, a lovely everybody. wednesday bye bye thank you bye now